There we go. All right, commentator hype. We in this. So at this point now, we're in losers semis. This is Litany versus Alex. Litany the Ganondorf and Alex the Meta Knight. I'm going into game one. This is still best of three. Um, starting on FD here. So Alex, a very uh, he he's a uh, focuses very hard on neutral, making sure he's got good movement, not being a uh, predictable movement. And um, but he does. Uh, he he waits for his opportunity to get hit in his opening, uh, and then uh, he'll go for his uh, dash dot combo, but not necessarily overextend. Whereas Litney's all about reading your movement, covering your options, and putting the fear in you so that you uh, extend in a certain way, you commit to a bad option, or flat out he just reads your option and punishes you hard for it. I'm <laughs> waiting on the ledge here. And yeah, Alex is not shy about trying to ed edge guard you off the stage because Meta Knight's tool is a very, uh, oh my god, shield break, reverse, warlock punch, kills at almost any percent. And that's Alex's, uh, sorry, Litany's first stop. Oh! Um. We take those? <laughs> um. Let's, I guess we can just say, hold, just stick to the other side of the stage next time. Uh, so we even, we even. <laughs> They're just seeing it now on the uh, on the overhead here. <laughs> oh, combo. Yeah, so uh, Ganondorf, he's gonna need a little bit of percent in order for him to be consistently caught in the combo. Uh, he's heavy enough so that um, he can start sort of fall out underneath, but as long as Meta Knight, for example, fastballs, to connect his combo, he'll be good, but if you DI in to the, at the ledge uh, for down throw, then Ganondorf is going to confirm forward air off you, and that's Litney taking the first game. Alright, so moving into game two, we'll hope that we don't see any uh, similar blobs. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, Ale oh, look at that. Going off stage. And that's one thing that's really important for Ganondorf in general. When you're off stage, uh, don't necessarily burn your double jump right away when uh, you're off stage. Maybe you need you only need to use the side of your up to get back. Because if you get hit back off stage, uh, having the option of a double jump will save you. And Lily's showing that he's aware that uh, when Meta does do his up B, he'll stick above the ledge a bit. So he's looking to just end the stock uh, due to that aspect of Meta Knight. Oh, and the reverse edge guard just came. Oh my goodness! The reverse edge guard went <laughs> completely in Litney's favor this time. The tipman being one of the scariest enemy spikes to be hit in the game sends you at one of the worst angles possible. So, it's really interesting just because um, Ganondorf, all, like, he does have long limbs, but uh, somewhat still struggles against Meta Knight's range because Meta Knight can just dash in so quickly at any point that um, Ganondorf, if he overcommits at some point, it is possible for a punish. Flick at that right there. And 
uh, overcommitting to a, a down B, a wizard's foot like that, is also going to get you pin for forward smashed by Alex. <laughs> and the typical 0% reads back from the ledge. Alex taking this combo as far as he can bring it, making sure he doesn't get Ganon sided from the ledge as well. Ganondorf, of course, uh, will always win the trade if he Ganon sides off the side. Oh, and, oh wow, and he actually completely covers the platform with a down smash there. Good awareness. Oh, and the cross up on both sides, uh, Litney being the first to act so that he can uh, capitalize on the punish. And this is where, uh, especially when you're at the ledge, these types of percents where um, a confirm isn't necessarily guaranteed, that's when you want a DI mix up kind of situation. So you can see Alex uh, did the forward throw in that case because you know he's looking to see is uh, is my opponent DI inward because he don't want to get knocked off stage so that maybe he can confirm and not be off that. But if you stick your foot out like that, then you're overextending and you're going to get hit by a forward smash. Which, by the way, Venom's forward smash is actually only active for one frame. So you need to make sure that one frame counts. So that's 1-1 one, one so far, right now. Uh, I've, I've, to my knowledge, these guys have played uh, fairly uh, uh, regularly at Hype Central. I, of course, don't attend that often, so I don't always keep track of these things. But uh, these guys, you know, they're, they, they, they uh, beast at it when they can. One thing that I'm always impressed by about both of these players is that they mix the twice poisons in neutral. They are always moving around their opponent, not necessarily throwing the first attack that... Uh, they're, not, they're not throwing their attack if they don't feel like they need to. They're doing it in case they feel the overextension, but when you're off stage like that, you get back aired and you get footstool to completely seal off that stock. That's a really good, that was a really good awareness by Alex right there to completely wipe out that stock as early as he did. Lydney, of course, putting a lot of platform pressure, and once you once you put down that one up smash, you pretty much should not shield again, or you will suffer another shield break. Uh, that's why Alex is being so careful about where he moves, but uh, Litney is capitalizing on that fear and getting those reads. Two downers in a row, and an up smash. Ganondorf always, he, he, he can catch you whether you're in the air, whether you're in the ground, uh, with different moves, so that's why it's always been intimidating to fight him, despite his status as a uh, slow and low tier character. Could be it, if he plays it well, and that looks like it'll be it. Uh, Ganondorf grabbed onto Meta Knight, but he ended up trading, so then Meta Knight uh, ended up being released, but Ganondorf kind of just flew off to the side, so he took that trade and he lost. That was best of three, so it's over.